Hi guys, I hope you're well. If you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Blakemore and I'm a teacher here in Dubai. In this video, we're going to be talking about Seesaw, which is a fantastic free platform where children can share their learning using a variety of interactive tools. This tutorial is going to show you how to set up your own Seesaw classroom for your children to be able to share their learning. I'm gonna show you each step from the very, very beginning, starting with Google search. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss future content where we'll be talking about other things that you can do with Seesaw. So let's jump straight into the video. So when you Google Seesaw, the first thing you're going to want to do is click onto the page, and then from there, you'll need to make sure that you sign up for your free account, which is one of the big advantages. Click that you're a teacher, and then enter the details needed. Once you've set up your classroom, one of the things you're going to need to do is to create your class. Now, for the purpose of this video, we're just going to call it example YouTube class, and you would need to select your grade. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to select the grade I normally teach, which is third grade, and then tick. But also remember, you can import it straight from Google Classroom too, if you happen to be using that as well. As Google Classroom is another learning platform, they combine well together, but they also stand alone well too. So once you've signed up for your account and created your class, you'll then need to add your pupils. You can add students in and you can either get them to sign in with their emails if you would like to, but the most common option is to click no, you don't need them to use their Google account or email address. You can have it as a shared device, so a group of children sharing it, but for the purpose of this video for Seesaw, we're going to pretend each child has their own device one-to-one. -one. Now, you're going to create your own list of students. Uh, this is great if you already have your list, as you can insert it there and just paste those students straight in, creating a list very quickly. Um, I'm going to create three children. Once you've added your pupils, CESA will automatically give you the ability to add your pupils in through either a QR code or you can print a sign in poster for you to attach it to the class so the children can add themselves in. For now, we're going to click off that. So you can see we've got a range of different pupils added in here. To start off with, we're going to have a look at my own account details. Now, to do that, I'm going to click this and have a look at my account settings here. The reason why I want to look at my account settings is so that I can turn off email notifications so I'm not bugged with lots and lots of different emails. It's up to you then if you want to have those notifications or updates from Seesaw. We're also going to have a look at the settings for our classroom. So we'll need to click in the top right-hand corner just up here, and you'll see the class settings drop down. Now you'll see our class name here. You can change the grade level. You can also manage teachers. This gives you the ability to add in a range of different teachers. Keep in mind that there are only a certain amount of teachers that can be added in before it asks you to uh, sign up to the premium version. You can also change the different themes if you choose to. And here you can manage the students. One of the settings to keep in mind is student likes and comments. It's up to you whether you keep that on or off. I prefer to keep it off so that the children aren't spending too much time focused on, on the amount of likes they have. I do like to have the option where pupils can comment on each other's piece of work and that new comments require approval first. You can also decide whether the children can see each other's work, which I believe is a powerful feature so that the children can at least see that other children are completing work to a high standard. You can also choose whether new items require approval. That's important just in case children submit any types of random bits and pieces as sometimes children do. Item editing, you can choose whether children can go back and edit work. This is important so that children can uh, self-correct and things like that. Now it's completely up to you again, but you can also enable family access that gives parents the opportunity to see their children's work. You can invite families in by submitting their email address here, and that's really quite straightforward. In addition, you can then manage what the parents can or can't see and how they interact with the children's work. Managing folders is also an important feature, so you can create a range of different folders for the children's work. For example, having a science folder, doesn't matter about the colors, although I know some teachers do really focus on the colors for some reason. English, and then we'll have a maths. 
That way children can complete work and submit it into the relevant folder, making things more organized. Skills is also a great but premium feature that allows you to have a look at different skills that the children need to complete that relate to your national curriculum. Okay, so now that we've had a look at the settings, we now need to have a look at how children are going to add things to the journal and how children are going to complete different activities that you set. So now we need to have a look at the different features available on the home screen. The journal is essentially a bit of a feed where children can submit information that they would like to. So things like having a new kitten or a new baby brother or sister. So it's those general bits of information that are non-work related little updates that they would like to share. Activities is the really important things where that's essentially your activities that you're going to share to the class for the children to complete. And scheduled, scheduled is a premium feature that allows you to set work, which will hopefully make your work-life balance a little bit easier. And then you've got your archive activities that you might archive once children have completed them. So now we're going to take a look at the different features available on the add feature. So here we'll have post-student work and that will go straight to the announcement. Assign activity is perhaps the most important part of Seesaw. And then we've also got send announcement that will share that with the children. If we have a look at a sign activity, there's a range of different things that you can do. Now, you can create your own activity. We're not going to in this tutorial, but if we click onto this, then there's all sorts of different things that you can do. You can name it, write the instructions, and then you can add a range of different instructions, whether it's you choose to add voice instructions or add a video instructions too. That's really useful, especially through distance learning. And then you can also add the template that the children are going to adapt and submit. One of the things I absolutely love about Seesaw is the community feature. Now, the community feature is fantastic because people who have used Seesaw in the past have submitted things to the community tab and it becomes available for other people to use. So let's say we're starting a new academic year and I want a get to know me activity. Here, there's a range of different activities that you can see straight away. What I'm going to do is heart this one. So then it turns up in my library. Then what I can do is assign that activity and I want to set it for these individuals, but I'm going to put it into the folders. I want it to be an English. I know it doesn't really relate to English very much, but we'll tick that off and then we're going to assign it to the class. Then we're going to have a look at what this would look like for a child. So now you can see we're on Kobe's piece of work. We need to change this as if we were the child. We would go on to add response and here you can see the activity. Now this is a generic activity that we've got from the community. There's lots of different things we can do. This summer I relaxed at home. And that can be moved there. You can also write on this too. So if I select the pencil tool, I like to, this will be an extremely bad basketball drawing. Oh filming this on the computer. And the children can also add a voiceover as they are creating their work, which is great. They can add a picture using the webcam and they can also add a link to a website, which is a fantastic tool and it's a new addition from Seesaw. Now, once the children have completed that work, they would then tick it and then that would get uploaded to the classroom ready for the teacher approval, as you can see just here. So now you can see I've received a notification saying that I have one unapproved post and that I need to review it. So I will review it. Once I'm satisfied with the piece of work, I might choose to like it or add a comment, or I might choose to go and edit the item. And when I look at that, I can then add in my own comments or my own different bits of marking. So I might choose to tick those different items or add a comment in myself or film myself and 
then add a voiceover talking to the child, but then we'll press the tick. And then I'm just going to approve that item. And then that will be posted to the range of different activities that the children can see. Once we've approved that piece of work, you can see it then shows up on the journal. Then other members of the class could comment on that piece of work, which is great for peer assessment too. As you can then see, that piece of work, because we allowed it to go into the English folder, has then gone into the English folder too. In addition to that as the teacher, if I wanted to, I could then add that into skills if I had them set up, or if I made a mistake, I could then add them into a different folder. Remember, you can then access those different folders in this folder section in the corner just here, and that way you can see the different pieces of work that the children have created. If I wanted to see all the different work from one child, I'd click on that child, and yes, I could spend a whole hour creating this video and showing you lots of different functionality for Seesaw, but for the basics of this video and just showing you how to use Seesaw, I think that's just about it. That marks the end of the video. Hopefully you found something useful within this video and you're excited to set up Seesaw with your class. If you enjoyed it, feel free to like it. I'm going to be creating more EdTech videos and more things specifically related to Seesaw too, so please make sure to subscribe so that you can see future content. I'll see you in the next one, guys, but until then, I'm not 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 I'm not